Lords of the Fallen follows the Dark Souls formula so closely it includes an elaborate secret ending quest that's arguably more involved than anything else in the main game. This weird optional ending forces you to kill almost every single useful character in your hub before fighting a new final boss that's easily the toughest fight in the entire game. This quest is so difficult we really recommend you don't try it until you've finished the game at least once. Even better, try doing it on New Game Plus Zero so you can blaze through the main story and reach the end fast. The boss waiting for you at the end does not mess around. If you don't prepare, you can very easily soft lock yourself into a no win scenario. Hi, I'm Toast and we are revisiting one of the weirdest optional ending quests in 2023. Even if you don't plan on playing Lords of the Fallen, you'll really want to check out this insane ending. Before getting started, make sure you don't cleanse any of the beacons. The beacons are glowing pillars of light that you can see in the far distance. Cleansing the beacons follows the main story path. The umbral ending quest requires you do not cleanse any beacons. Next, we need to reach an optional area called the Revelation Depths. This area is accessible from the Sunless Skyne near the Skin Taker boss. From the underground waterway, collect a key and lower the water level. Drop down into the floating cages to enter the Revelation Depths. This is a difficult dark cavern with multiple shortcuts you can unlock by pulling elevator switches as you progress to the bottom level. Reach the Depths Vestige at the bottom of the Revelation Depths. There is an optional boss ahead. At the bottom, battle the boss Harawa Dervla, the Pledged Knight, and defeat both forms. Defeating her gives you access to a strange altar behind the boss arena, up the stairs. This altar requires a unique item. Return to Molhu, the umbral vendor in the Skyrest Bridge, and purchase an umbral scouring clump. This item costs 50 umbral scouring. Once you have the umbral scouring clump, you can proceed. Return to Harawa Dervla's boss arena in the Revelation Depths and interact with the altar. Select the option Hand Over Umbral Scouring. This will teleport you to a creepy area called the Mother's Lull. An enormous elder being looms in the far distance and our goal for the umbral ending is to reach that being. And to do that, we need to sacrifice souls. Inside the Mother's Lull area, interact with the Standing Husk NPC to acquire key items called Seed Pods. To progress the Umbral Ending quest, you'll need to acquire Seed Pods marked with the names of NPCs. Give the Seed Pods to the NPC, then return to Mother's Lull to get another Seed Pod. The quest does become more complicated, but that's the general path you need to follow. The first item you'll acquire is the Damaros Seed Pod. Damaros first appears in the Sanctuary of Baptism area near the boss arena. She will appear in multiple areas if you exhaust all of her dialogue. She appears often to warn you from following the main story path. Give the seed pod to Damaros, then return to Mother's Lull to acquire the Galinda seed pod. For each seed pod you successfully deliver, you'll unlock a new anchor point in Mother's Lull, allowing you to get slightly closer to the putrid mother in the far distance. We don't have nearly enough anchor points yet. The second seed pod is for Galinda the blacksmith. Galinda can be rescued near the end of Pilgrim's Perch before the Hunter boss arena. Unlock her cage and she'll appear in your hub and sell items or upgrade weapons. Galinda is an incredibly important NPC, so I recommend waiting to give her the seed pod. Don't give her the seed pod until right before the end of the game. You can wait and give her the pod up to right before entering Bramus Castle. When you enter the gates to Bramus Castle, you will permanently lock yourself into an ending. Don't kill Galinda until you're ready to enter Bramus Castle. There are many more steps you can take before that point, so here's what you'll want to do before giving the seed point to Galinda. Next, defeat the Light Reaper boss. This boss will appear in multiple arenas and kill you. The last arena is in Upper Kalrath. Defeat the Light Reaper to acquire the Light Reaper's Umbral Parasite. You can earn this at any point in the story by defeating him. Once you have the key item, go to Malhu's room in the Skyrest Bridge. After giving the seed pod to Galinda and returning to Mother's Lull and getting the message from the NPC, return to Molhu's room in Skyrest Bridge. One of the four pillars in the room will be interactable. Use the pillar, one of the open glass pillars, to place the umbral parasite. Remember to enter the umbral before attempting to interact. 
this ending is also a little buggy so you may need to restart the game. I recommend performing a full reset, closing the game down and reloading to make sure the next step triggers properly. Once the first umbral parasite is placed we'll need to get the next important key item. After placing the first Umbral Parasite in Malhu's room, return to Mother's Lull and talk to the Husk NPC. The Husk wants the Rune of Adia. The Rune of Adia is a key item acquired during the main story at different points depending on if you're progressing the Iron Wayfarer's quest. No matter what, you will get the Rune of Adia from the Abbey of the Hallowed Sisters or after defeating the Iron Wayfarer boss directly outside of the gates to Bramus Castle in Upper Kalrath. If you do need to defeat the Iron Wayfarer, do not enter Bramus Castle. If you enter Bramus Castle, you will permanently unlock yourself into the Inferno ending. With the Rune of Adia key item, return to Mother's Lull and give it to the Husk NPC. You will get the Withered Rune of Adia and Melquar's Seed Pod in return. With the Withered Rune of Adia unlocked, you are now fully prepared to complete the Umbral Ending quest. At this point, you may now enter Bramus Castle and face off against one of the final bosses of the game. Go to Upper Kalrath and unlock the gate to Bramus Castle. Bramus Castle is a long and difficult dungeon. At the end, you will battle the Sundered Monarch boss. Defeat him and take the stairs up to the strange effigy with the floating body inside. Talk to the NPC. Then select to use Melquois seed pod to kill it. We are almost done. Next you'll need to acquire multiple umbral parasites and place the items in the pillars in Malhu's room in Skyrest Bridge. The next umbral parasite is acquired from the Iron Wayfarer, the NPC that appears throughout the game. If you followed his quest and defeated him outside the gates of Ramus Castle, the Iron Wayfarer will appear in one final location. Travel to the Fife of the Chill Curse, starting from the Fife Vestige and climb the ladders following the starting path of the area to a castle wall past an archer. Climb the ladder at the castle wall and drop down to reach a ledge with a view of the entire area. The Iron Wayfarer will appear on this ledge while in the Umbral Realm. If you didn't defeat the Iron Wayfarer outside of Bramus Castle, he'll be located at whatever previous location you've progressed. If you didn't talk to him at all, he'll be found at the start of the Red Cops village. Talking to him will give you Harkin's Umbral Parasite. Return to Malhu's room and use another container in the Umbral Realm. Look for another pillar just like the first Umbral Parasite we placed. Once it's been placed, talk to Malhu. The final step is very close. Talk to Pieta nearby and select Use Soul Flay on Pieta to begin the final boss battle. Following these final steps will permanently block you from using Pieta's facilities. Make sure to buy any Remembrance weapons from Malhu before completing this step and upgrading your healing with Pieta. The final step is the hardest and locks you into the true final boss. Eliane the Starved is a twisted evil form of Pieta that uses a similar fighting style that's also much, much more difficult. She glides around the arena unleashing umbral magic and spawns copies of herself to fight you while she harasses you from afar. The copy has less HP but dodging attacks from two enemies at the same time can be extremely difficult. Defeating the copy will stagger Eliane making her vulnerable to a powerful attack. To defeat Eliane you need to learn the rhythm of Eliane's magical attacks and dodge often. You can't watch her directly while fighting the copy but she will only attack from far away. Engage her copy and destroy it as quickly as possible while dodge rolling to avoid Eliane's magical attacks. Stagger her, deal damage then repeat. Eliane is too fast to chase down if you are a melee warrior so you are better off defeating her copy whenever it appears. With the right weapons you can destroy the copy surprisingly quickly. Even if you're playing on New Game Plus and you are extremely overpowered, this is a tough fight. I recommend waiting to use the seed pod on Galinda until you are confident you can win this fight and have one of the overpowered weapons from our previous guides. After defeating Eliane the Starved, go back to Malhu's room and place Eliane's Umbral Parasite in the third pillar container. With the parasite placed, talk to Malhu and choose to enter the Mother's Lull one more time. In the Mother's Lull, step on the floating platform and use Soul Flay on the anchor points. You should now have enough anchors to reach the Elder God on the other side of the gulf. This creature is the Putrid Mother, the true force behind all the Umbral mystery going on in the background of the game. For following this ritual, you unleash her power into the living world, allowing her to consume all life. This is by far the darkest, weirdest ending in the game, 
and also the hardest to get. Follow these steps and you too can experience a pretty wild ending and one that just so happens to be one of our favourites of 2023. If you found this video helpful, please consider hitting the like button, commenting or subscribing for more content like this in the future.